Thank you so much. Okay, so now we will have the energy by the water. Good afternoon, church. It's under sad circumstances we are here. Today is our mom's birthday. She was born on the 6th of August. And we are here to bid her farewell. We are here to say bye bye to her. Uh, the eulogy will be done in the cemetery since as part of this church's protocol it is not allowed here so we will do it at the cemetery but i have a tribute written out to my mother our dear mother we weep for our mom feeling broken and forlorn we have lost our best friend that we loved unconditionally to the end we hear your encouraging words. We feel the comfort of your arms as you lay in repose. We see the beauty of your smiles. Etched in our soul is your love to continue the rugged miles. Your happy laughter will be our propellant wings. Your good spirits will be our positive coordinates when loneliness sets in. Your strength will carry us through. With your courage, we will renew. Mother, just who can take your place? Who will be your best friend to continue life's race? Who will listen to us the way you did? You were quiet like a beautiful white orchid. Your personality was beautiful and rare. Sentiments so deep we share. Remin reminiscent of your innate qualities, the template of our strength and securities. From our hearts that need mending, that need mending, your love was amazing. With pride we say, sleep or oh dear mother. As the angels whisper to one another, welcome home. Happy birthday with love alone. Thank you. Okay, so now we we'll just have the the Johnson and his daughters to pay tribute. And this is not the best occasion for us to meet, but it's a time when we all have to meet. But there's also a place where we still have to meet later on. Is that place called Hallelujah Square? I saw a blind man. Losing his way as he passed through the street. I said, My friend, I feel sorry for you. 
But he set up in heaven, I'm gonna see just like you. I'll see all my friends in Hollywood Square. What a wonderful time we all have up there. We will sing and praise Jesus, his glory will share. And there will not be one blind man. I saw a cripple dragging along. He couldn't walk like we do down the street. I said, my friend, I feel sorry for you. But he said, up in heaven, I'm going to walk just like you. I'll see all my friends in Hallelujah's land. What a wonderful time we all have a friend. We will sing and praise Jesus, His glory is to share. And there'll not be one cripple in Hallelujah's land. What a wonderful time we'll all have We will sing and praise Jesus, His glory to share. And there will not be one purple in hallelujah's For I'm going up to heaven, but how about you? I'll see all my friends in Hallelujah's land. What a wonderful time we all have up there. We will sing and praise Jesus, His glory. All in forever in Hallelujah's land. I'll see all my friends in Hallelujah's land. What a wonderful time we all have up there. We will see a great Jesus in glory.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We celebrate this holy mass for our mother as we prepare it. We are gathered here to give her a befitting funeral. Philomen, glory, God. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that you saw your son who died on the cross was raised from the dead. The first fruit of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant, Philomen, who has gone to her rest in Christ, may share in the joy of the resurrection. We add this to Christ our Lord, your son, who lives and reigns with you, living of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And godliness with contentment is indeed great again. For we brought nothing into the world, and certainly we can take nothing out. But having food, sufficient clothing, with these, let us be content. But those who seek to become rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many useless and harmful desires, which plunge men into destruction. And which plunge men into destruction and damnation. For covetous is the root of all evil, and some and some in, the, in their eagerness to get rich have strayed and from the have strayed from the faith and have involved themselves in many troubles. Be thou, O man of God, flee these things, but pursue justice, godliness, faith, charity, patience, mildness. Fight for the good, fight the good fight of the of the faith. Hold on to life eternal, to which thou hast been called, and hast made the good confession before many witnesses. This is the word of the Lord.
The second reading is taken from Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 11. Therefore, if you have risen with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Mind the things that are above, not the things that, that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, shall appear, then you too will appear with him in glory. Therefore, mortify your members which are on earth, immortality, uncleanliness, lust, evil desire, and covetousness, which is a form of idol worship. Because of these things, the wrath of God comes upon the unbelievers. And you yourselves won't walk in them, and when they were your life. But now, do you also put them all away? Anger, wrath, malice, abusive language, and form of eternity. Do not lie to one another. Strip off the old man with his deeds, and put on the new one that is being renewed into perfect knowledge, according to the image of his creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian or Scythian, slave and freeman, but Christ is all things and in all. This is the word of the Lord. For they will be called the children of God. 
the place that they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God. The place are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. That comes from all the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. By hearing that God will make our sins be forgiven. Amen. May we see you.
the link of the festival, the link said it clear. It said celebration of life. Amen. And I saw that and said, yes, that is what it is. Amen. But that is what it is. Celebration of life. Now, we are not just celebrating this life because of how many years. Because I saw 93. But the person who put that 93, I put it before you, it's not 93. It will be 94. So could, I, could I like it or not? Okay? Because somebody, you know, was giving birth on 16th of, 6th of August, okay? 1928. And he died on 23rd of July, 2022. How many days to his birthday? 14 days. And when supposed to be his birthday? Today. I don't know who planned this, but I want to, I want to thank the family because it, uh, they did it well. Okay? This is very significant. Today we are very now, today is our birthday. So he must, she must read 94, not 93. He should sign. Whether you like it or not, you are 94. Okay, you are not 93 at all. Today is our birthday. We are celebrating the life and we must celebrate the birthday. <laughs> not death. We are not celebrating death. We are celebrating life. So rejoice because we are with you, okay? Because we believe you are still alive. She is still alive. Forget about something inside here. She is still alive. The first thing when I came, I went straight to just to see her face. Because I have not met her face to face, but I have seen, I saw the picture and all this and that. And I discovered that this woman can smile. And her smile is, oh my goodness, her smile is uh, a kind of, uh, uh, you know, the one that intoxicates. <laughs> it's like uh, when you smoke and you start, you know, or when you drink, your system starts, you know, changing. When you, you when you met, I mean, if you see her face, you must smile. And that is what I went there and see. You know, I hardly believe that she has died. I looked at her face, I said, oh. This shows where you are going. It shows where you are. Because from, from their fruit we shall, we shall know that. Amen? When you die and your face is squeezed, and you are like my face, what does that show? What does that show? I don't know. You are the one that said it. <laughs> but when you are smiling and the it's very hard for somebody to understand that you are, you are giving spirit. That is just something that you know where you are headed to. Yes. Now, we gather here because we believe in God. If not because we believe in God, we are not supposed to be here. If you are here and you are not a believer, I don't know why you are here. Where are we? Where are we? In the church, right? I want to ask you a question, all of you. This is this is a fact, and it is a fact. I think you cannot deny it. No matter how we preach against it, what I'm going to say now is a fact. And whether you like it or not, you cannot deny it because it is true. I want to ask everybody the question. Suppose Philomen did not die, and today is a birthday, and she is to celebrate that birthday. And it is in the church. How many will follow her to come? You are saying, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Another question is suppose you want to celebrate this birthday, where will be the venue, the place to celebrate that birthday? Will it be in the church or? Home. Why are we not in the home now? 
Why in the church? Somebody will say, eh, 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 this and that, and eh, if you do not celebrate me when I am alive, don't celebrate me when I am dead. I'm sorry for you. You are not understand what death is all about. Oh, if you don't visit me when I am in hospital, there is no need of visiting me when I die. You will not understand. If this is fact, you cannot deny that. I am very sure, even myself, I may not come. If somebody comes here and is celebrating birthday, come. I may give, I may give excuse, but I am here because of what? It is dead. Why? Ask yourself a question. See all of us. See crowd. If it is birthday, how many will come? And when we will celebrate it? Why in the church? Now listen. Death is a definition of life. In death, we understand what life is all about. That is when you know what life is all about. That is when you ask yourself, why am I living? This life I'm living. That is when you appreciate your own life. That is when you thank God that you are still alive. When you are looking at this death. Let it remind you, say God, thank you, I'm still breathing, I'm still talking, I'm still walking, I'm still doing something, thing. I'm still shaking my head, I'm still moving. If not because of God, you will. How? Who knows when it will be like this? Let it be reminding you, not just coming here and then you go. When you come to bed there for, for, for Funela, look at the dead and say, ah, what day I will be like this body will be. Like him. If you have never sick, if you have never suffered from any sickness, you will not understand what the health is all about. If you have not suffered from what they call a uh, go to it. Ah, it's like you have, oh my goodness. <laughs> hey, it's like somebody has dealt with you very well. You see how he shouted. You will not understand what love is all about. If you have not expressed hatred, what can you say about love? You will take everything for granted. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How many of you wake up? How many of you wake up today and shouted Jesus' name? Nobody. I, I mean, you wake up and say, Oh, Jesus, did you do that? Did you? You did not. Because everything went normal. You wake up, nothing. Okay? You just see your, your eyes open. You remove your leg, right? You come down, your leg is still strong. You raise your hand up, it's still okay. You just move, pew. You take your back and then you go off, you go. Did you say thank you, Jesus? Did you shout Jesus' name? He did not. I'm not praying for you for this, but uh, how I wish tomorrow morning. You be able to. I mean, you want to. You want to open that eyes. You have already waited, but you want to open it. That is, it is not opening. What would you do? What would what would the first first word that will come up on your mouth? Is Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus, yeah, Jesus. Thank you very much. You now know. That is when you now know the definition of sight. When your mouth closed, you now know the definition of how to talk. That it is not just open your mouth and, and vomiting anything that comes up on your mouth. Oh, we don't understand. That is our problem. We don't understand. We are supposed to be celebrating her birthday. But she said, oh, okay, 14 days to her birthday. She said, oh. What about you? How, how many go? How, how, how long are you going to stay in this life? How long? How long? 90, 94, 93 is not easy at all. Divide it into three. That is my own thing. So I have not even started. And I'm tired. Though. I'm telling you, I am tired. This life. This life. I sh did it on the, how many years? Hey, give God glory and also thank you because it's not easy. That kind of easy. It's because of how all of us have gathered. We may not know how true 
but he may know somebody who knows her. Maybe the children, because I know one of the, the child. Okay, that is why I'm here. And that is how it is. That is what time is all about. Connection. Connection. So it is in death that we, we, our eyes will be open to understand what life is all about. We are to appreciate not her life. Amen? <laughs> because the person who put it to celebrate the celebration of life mm -mm. is not her own life. It is your own life. You are going to appreciate. You are going to celebrate. When you go home, drink one kubeli, you know, or Henneke, and I say, Jesus, thank you for this life. Because you, you, you have already opened your mind. Amen? She has lived her life. And she is thanking God for that. You have to do your own. You have to live your own life. Are you living it at all? How do you live it? The life given to you, what have you used it for today? I mean today. Not even yesterday. How many, how old are you? Ask yourself a question. I am 33. I say I'm so old. How far about that 33? It's not how long, but how well. And what determines the how well is uh, your focus. <laughs> that is where all of us are not getting it. Our focus. Amen? What is the focus in life? Ask yourself a question. What is the focus? What, what is driving you? What is pulling you and what is pushing you? Where are you heading to? This life you have today, what is the purpose? Where are you heading to? What is pulling you away? What is disturbing you in life? What is taking your time, your attention in life? What is that? Where is your treasure? That is what you're going to ask yourself. It's not just living, it's not just having life today, but having it purposefully. For what? God gave you life just like that. It's not just like that. You cannot buy life anymore. With your mom, you cannot buy it. I so appreciate that's purpose for it. And that purpose is you must you must fulfill it. If not, you are telling the giver, you are a stupid man, a stupid God. Okay? You don't deserve it. And so if you if you wake up every morning, ask yourself, where am I heading to? Why why do you give me this life, God? Help me to fulfill the purpose of today, not just tomorrow, not just yesterday, because you are still today. Nobody knows whether we are going to see it tonight. And, of course, nobody is ready to go, but they have to prepare. I am not ready to go, but I have prepared. Amen? Amen. If you ask me, I, I would like that today, I will say, I'm not ready. But I have prepared, even if it's today, I have prepared to go. So don't be surprised that uh, tomorrow you may hear that there will father mama that uh, you saw in Wesley this night and he's going and something happened and then off he goes. That's all. Nobody knows. You don't know. If you know what is going to happen, the next time you raise up your hand. Let's see. Do you know what will happen to you in the evening? Around 6 o'clock. What will happen? Nobody knows. So we live by faith, we live by hope, and we live in the heart of God. Heart of love. That is our purpose. How are you feeling that, that life? You have come to celebrate, not just a life, but your own life. You have come to appreciate, not just a life, but your own life. Appreciate your own life. And then you go home and ask, what am I living for? Are you living for your job? Is it your job that you are living for? Every day you are just for a job, for a job, for money, for this, for that, for food. Are you living for food? Are you living to just to have a, a, a car or just to build a house? What is that that you you know, are you living just to, to, to dance or to go to this and that? What are you living like that for? That is a very good question. What is that that is driving you? Let whatever you pass through, especially the ugly one in life, begin to remind you the one that you enjoy so that you not take life for granted. When you notice that you are suffering from headache, begin to thank God, be grateful, and say, God, if not you, this headache will have been killing me. 
I did not suffer yesterday and I'm suffering today. Therefore, I am thanking you for not allowing me to suffer yesterday. In your ugly situation, you begin to use it to, to thank God for the one you have joined. Because sometimes God allows something to happen to you so that you now know that it's not just like that. So that you don't take it for granted. Without this moment, you have not suffered anything. And then you just wake up. And then all you do is just to and then do that. Ah, no, it's not like that. Live a life of gratitude so that uh, you will be appreciated at all times. Then nobody will be taken to pray. Nobody will be taken to come to church. Nobody will be all this and that. Because whether you like it or not, how many times have you come to church? When did you go to church last? When did you go to church last? And where are you now? In the church. She is, of course, uh, I asked of her. That is why she is here. Okay, she tried in her own way. What about you? As a believer, once you are baptized, either in the Catholic or Christian or Methodist or whatever, when, 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 where are you going to see before, before they bury you? In the, in the where? In the church. In the church. That church you are running away from, at the end, they will bring you force you. It is by God because you know you know with your body, lifeless. And where will you stay? At the front. You know, sometimes, sometimes you come, you live very far from the house. You, you stay out very far at the back of the church. Don't worry, when you die, we bring you here. <laughs> you keep running away, no problem. At the end of your life, we tell you what is the that you be praying for. Don't take it for granted. Use whatever that is happening and define your life and let your life just flow like that. Know the important one. Know the best thing in life. Not just the last of the good, but go for the best. What is the best in life? What is the best in life? After here, what, where else again? In the grave. And that's all. I have to tell, tell her that uh, this is the highest place. Okay? If I miss the church, I'm sorry for you. The highest place you will stay is the highest place. You have to, you know, live your life. The highest place you are supposed not to be running away from. That highest place that you're going to stay at the last day. Where is that last place? In the church. How do you take it serious? How do you come to church? You think it's, you are coming for myself or for Father Paul or for the choir? You are coming for yourself. It's not even by it's not by force. Whatever you do, at the end you define it. We tell you the main one. Now, now, when you go to Facebook, what are they going to? When you check the whatever is there, whoever that is commenting will say what? Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. What are, what is rest in peace? If I may ask you. No, 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 it's not the question that you ask. What is that that you are telling to rest in peace? Okay. If we have already prayed, rest in peace. What is that that is resting in peace? Is it the body? Is it the body that telling to rest in peace? The body will be buried and covered with what? With what? With death. What, what does that signify? That the, that body is nothing. To rest in peace. So, uh, don't talk now. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we gathered here? Are we gathered here because of the body? It's because of the soul. The prayer is because of the soul. The prayer is for the soul. Then ask yourself, which one are you taking care of more? Is it your soul or your body? Is it your soul or your body? Which one are you taking care of? Is it your soul or your body? Ask yourself that question. Then you know the one that is important. That body that, you, that is taking you away. The body that when you want to come to church, you say, ah, you are tired. The body that, oh my goodness. You want to pray, but before you know it, you sleep. That body is, is putting you into prison. Putting your soul into prison. And you don't even care anymore. 
you you take care of the body, anything the body asks you to do, you, you do it. Go and fornicate, you, you do it. You fornicate. Go and masturbate, ah, you masturbate. Go and take somebody's wife or girlfriend, yo, you, you do it. You do all of them because ah, I use my body, I use it where I Go and do it. Go. Then you want to wear clothes and then. Uh, ga, ga, ga. I'm sorry. People don't understand anymore. That's the place we are going to have a phone call. Today, define the place you are going to. Today, give you the important one that you have to think about. Somebody will somewhere in their awkward line, in their awkward places, and thinking how to destroy the wall, how to expose you. Okay? And then the person in that airport and say, we have to design the clothes so that when the woman wears it, it will expose everybody, expose everything so that immorality will continue. And then they will bring the clothes out. And they say it is what? It is what? The fashion. Who buys it? You. And then when you put it on, you say it's fashion. And then you look yourself, go, go to the mirror and look yourself, and then you come out. Ah, oh, you see this flesh, you see this body that is, that is taking much time of you. At the end, oh, just bring it and then what? And cover it with what? Cover it with what? Rest in peace, you see the body. Ah, just, just open this, you see. Very fine gasket. What it does? What does this show? Very fine gasket. It's not fine. Very fine. Okay. What is the clothes on top? What is it? White. What does it signify? Purity. The the gasket tells you how beautiful the place you are going. That is why they, they beautify the gasket. If not, they will build nonsense for gasket. But the gasket is telling you, heaven is beautiful, okay? We build this in so that you, you is giving loss, okay? Where you are heading to. Why this flower? Why all this in? After, after the whatever, we come on top of the, the grave and do what? And put what? Flowers and decorate it. What does that signify? We are telling you, when you rise, this is the... The, another world. It is beautiful. Go. That is our prayer. Go. The soul. Go. That is what it is. Purity. To so let you know the highest thing in life. Not just living your life anyhow. Why are you living your life anyhow? Who is God in your life? That is what you go to ask yourself. This preaching and this message is a message of repentance, a message of conversion, a message of forgiveness. So that you go home and uh, think that, uh, oh, I need to do something new thought. I need to be start thinking something best, not better. You may be doing things good. To take care of your body, yes, of course you do that. But there's something that you must take care of more. And that is what? Your soul. Because when everything happens, you say, my soul rests in peace. It is well with what? It is well with what? With my soul. And the gospel says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Our life in this world, you see our action, we cannot merit heaven. The only thing that helps us is what? Love and mercy. If you are not merciful to your brother and sister here, man, when you die during the judgment, God will not be merciful to you. The he said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall work. Obtain mercy because you live a merciful life. Keep on living a merciful life. And that mercy, he defined it, say, Be merciful as what? As your heavenly father is. Not as you want to be merciful because left for you in your own merciful. You will now be defining who you should be merciful to and who you should not. Okay? You now have a circle. Those who will be inside your circle and those who will be outside your circle. I'm sorry for you. Because God, that's why God said, love even your enemy. Is it, is it possible to love your enemy? Pray for those who persecute you. Is it possible? It's not possible. That is 
where we are heading to. That is how to be merciful, like your heavenly Father, not like yourself. Let us use what happened today and rethink about our life. The only thing that we say is to love one another and love everybody. Love is the only language that is obtainable where she is now. If you want to cross, there is a song across the across the bridge. Across the bridge. Across the bridge. You, you, you people are not saying the one you like. Across the bridge. No, no, no. Across the bridge. Across the bridge. Across the bridge, there's no more money. Across the bridge. You're laughing. Across the bridge, there's no more house. Across the bridge, there's no more girlfriend. Across the bridge, there's no more wife. Across the bridge, there's no more children. Across the bridge, there's no more sickness. Across the bridge, there's no more hatred and conflict. Why are you, you know, Buga? You know the Buga now. Why are you Buga? You, 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 you just, you just hate somebody. And then, and then you refuse to talk to the person. And then you are squeezing your face. And then you are. <laughs> and then when somebody asks you to forgive, you say, how can I forgive you? I cannot. Who are you? Across the street, there's no unforgiving spirit. Why are you holding it? The person you say you cannot live with. What of you if two of you die and then you find yourself in heaven? <laughs> then you look at the face, you have condemned the person here on earth, and you never refuse the person. And then you go, and eventually, yes, you find yourself in heaven. What happens? You will continue the hatred now. Abi? You see, that is why you cannot see heaven. The heaven you are, the enemy, start the heaven now. The heaven starts now. Now, eternal life granted to her. That eternal life starts now. Get your ticket. If you don't have a ticket of eternal life, you cannot have it. And the ticket, the price of eternal life, the, the money to buy it is what? Your life. Amen? Amen. If you want eternal life, the only thing that will buy that eternal life is what? Your life and this life is being defined by time. That life that's been defined by time is what you're going to use to buy the life that is being defined by eternal, which is infinite, which is forever. Now, this life you have, who has it? Amen? The life you have, who has it? Is it yourself that have it? Is it your girlfriend that have it? Is it your children? Is it the government? Is it your country? Is it your community? Is it Kubili? Is it a... <laughs> okay? Is it wrong? Is it whiskey? What is that? Have you ever gone to a place that uh, somebody died and is a, a, a bike rider? Have you ever gone to that better? You see what they used to do in the, in the grave? What they used to do? They would buy whiskey, buy everything, buy the weed, buy everything, buy the marajua and what? And pour inside the air and the grave and pour the wrong. I like that. To remind you, this is where you are heading to. Okay? This is your life. So, you keep on going. When, while the priest is praying for peace, they are praying for, for weed. Continue drinking. Continue smoking. <laughs> Amen? It's not by force. Anything you are doing in this world, at the end, it will show. I'm telling you, whatever you read, that whatever you so that's what you're going to. Hey, read. There's no two ways about that. If you like, continue. If you like, live your life anyhow. At the end, you will see what you have. Have you given your life to Jesus? You think it's by force? If you do not give your life to Jesus, I'm sorry for you. We, we may be wasting our time 
praying for you at the end of your own day and say, rest in peace. Did you live in peace? <laughs> Did you live in peace with your brother? If you do, of course you know. By the fruit, we shall know them. There's no two ways about that. So it is you and God. It's between you and God, not between you and another person. It better the soul you have is your own soul. And then you have to give that soul to Christ. If not, another thing will take it. There are four things that last at last. Four things at the end. Four things that are waiting each and every one of us. The last four things is waiting for you and waiting for me. The first one is what? Death. Our mother has already gotten one. The remaining three. Among the four, you must have three. You must have three. Must. She has one now, which is dead. Second one is judgment. And judgment starts immediately. And also it will not happen at the end of time. Judgment starts immediately when you die. And it also happens at the end of time. Whether you like it or not, you face Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, when you are still alive, you know him when you when you die. And he will not say, oh, he will not say, Lord, 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 I know you. We use your name. We pray. We do this and say, I don't know you. How will you feel if Jesus will say that to your soul? I don't know you. He said, eh, well, we have been going to Bera. I have been coming to church only during the Bera, uh, during the, the funeral. I have been doing this. I have been praying. I said, I don't know you. Get out. How will you feel? That's a judgment. And then, depending on what the judgment, you will not get to the third one. The third one is either heaven or hell. Either heaven or hell. Don't just think that uh, it starts when you die. It starts when you are still alive. It's one that you buy, you will go. If you are going to St. Lucia now, what will you do? You go and get your ticket. Ticket from who? St. Lucia. They will write St. Lucia on that. Two of us. They cannot write to Barbados. Of course, if the Barbados, what happened? If Barbados you are going, the ticket you have, which one is written on top of it? Is it hell or is it heaven? It's a question you ask yourself. Okay? Keep on living your life. A life of hot life. Live a, a beautiful life, not hot life. Not hot. You are hot in this and that. I think I said this somewhere. Okay? If you are living a, a hot life, you wear hot clothes, you wear all these things. Don't worry, it is well. What defines hell? What defines hell? Hot or beautiful? What defines heaven? Beautiful. If your life is beautiful, then at the end, you go to a beautiful place, which is what? Heaven. Then if your, if your life is very hot, hey, hot this, hot this, hot that, don't worry. When you die, where will you be? You go to a hot place. And where is the hot place? Where is the hot place? You are the one that said it's not to be. Okay? But the only thing is what? Give your life to Jesus. And let the death of our mother define your own life. When you look at her, ask yourself, I will be like her. In less any time. Because nobody knows the time. Because continue to bless this world in your hand. And may you do everything at all. Everything it takes for you. Everything it can. Do everything by all means to save more your soul than your body. And that is the message of today. May God bless you. My Father, do the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May we stand for intercessory prayer. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ his Son from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save 
all his people living and the dead. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Philemon, who in baptism was given the place of eternal life, that she may now be admitted into the company of the saints. We pray to the Lord. For our mother, who ate the body of Christ, bread of life, that she may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. For our diseased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of goodness, we pray to the Lord. Those who have fallen asleep in the hope of his neglect, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. For the family and friends of our mother and sister and Philemon, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. For all of us who are assembled here to worship in faith, that we may gather together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in law to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed sister Kilo. Cleanse her and others from their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we sit down as the choir sing, the family ushers will go around for a battery collection.
Almighty Father,
please. We stand for God, please. We start with worship. And we are still worshiping God. Behold our Savior. Behold the man that conquered the dead. Behold the resurrection. Behold our Savior, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the heart of the Lamb. The body and blood of Christ guide us to life everlasting. We can now sit down and uh, those Catholics who have prepared themselves in our traditional way, we thank everyone who have participated in this holy mass. We have already shared the concomitant blessings that flow with the Catholic holy mass. But the reception of the holy communion is strictly reserved for Catholics who have prepared themselves in our traditional way.
await the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our mortal bodies to conform with his glorified body. Let us pray. So we stand and pray. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that your servant fellow men who are recorded, who today have journeyed from this world, may by the sacrifice of the cleansed and be freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joy of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. May we sit down. We are gradually coming to the end of this wonderful Eucharistic celebration. And we thank our homilies, Father Teddy's Mama. Apart from the bishop that holds the whole parish in the days of Rosso, he is the other parish priest who is money and appointed to be in charge of two parishes. So he's a priest of two, a parish priest of two parishes. So a round of applause for him. <laughs> Incoming parish priest of uh, St. Luke and Mark, Newtown and Super. Uh, we thank our choir, wonderful choir, of the Church of John the Baptist, Maryland. <laughs> and we thank all of you who have come to join in this spiritual work of mercy, to pray for the dead and bury the dead. Pray for the dead is a spiritual work of mercy, and bury the dead is a corporal work of mercy. I believe that was what I tried to tell you. Why are we here? Ask yourself why we are here. We thank you. Why we are here is to pray for the dead. And we have joined the Catholic Church in praying the highest prayer, the Holy Mass, for the soul of our mother, Philomena. We thank you. A round of applause for everybody, please. I can see a forehead that looks like the opposition leader at the back. I'm not very sure with all this mask, but I can see that they uh, have a look at him. So we have a applause for him. <laughs> Our honorable and uh, perhaps this death, this death might be seen out, might have attracted a lot of people, good people of Dominica. I thank you. Most of you don't go to church on this. <laughs> but we are happy that at least you buried the dead. And on funeral, you come and reflect. Don't go home the same. When you come to funeral, don't go home the same. Make sure you take something home from all that the priests have already put to us. Take your own home and make a change. So we are giving room, not for three things. Now I'll call on family members or delegates from the family members to come and uh, express their appreciation to this congregation. Either words of appreciation or songs of farewell to our wonderful beloved mother. Songs of farewell, words of appreciation to the congregation, not tribute. Okay, so I think I represent the family.
in this situation since this was requested specifically by them. Also bearing me since I'm kind of recovering from the flu, but I know that these songs are well known. So if you do know them, I, I'm asking that you sing it as well since we are celebrating the life.
glory to God, one of the many. Uh, I know if you are still here and if you are not feeling how I am feeling, I don't know. I don't feel like uh, we should not do it again. <laughs> Amen. Because it has been so colorful, it has been so beautiful. We thank you, family. We thank you, everyone. Really I think uh, the second song here is for each and every one of you that there is a place for the people like you. It is not easy to be here from 2 o'clock till now. Don't take it for granted. And believe me, people will do that for your own time. People will do that for you as well. So we appreciate everybody. We appreciate Father Paul. appreciate the choir. We have already done it and continue to do it. But one more thing. Okay, one more thing. I am here for a special something. But I, I want to thank for one more thing. We are doing, we have done enough for the remaining one. Just like what I said. Remember, our mother is still alive. She has, she has, she's still alive. The only thing that she did to her is her body is no more moving. Because her soul is still alive. So since I was born, I'm telling you, and since I am a young priest, I have never buried somebody on her birthday. Amen. So this is a special one. So, and um, we have baked cake for her. And that is the uh, uh, Blessed Sacrament. And we have also poured wine for her. And that is the blood we have already taken. So we remain one more thing. And that is the song of birthday. Whether you like it or not, we are coming for two things. For birthday and for burial. It is so significant and uh, it is not a fault. If you are jealous, I don't know, be jealous. <laughs> I am jealous as well. How I wish I would die very close to my birthday and I will be buried on my birthday. Oh my goodness, Sister Focus, and today is Sister Focus. So I urge everybody to stand up and as I'm standing up, okay, the family should come around the cross. The family should come around the cross and you know the the song, just stand up for her. Last one, last one. We came here for her, okay? We are going to stop her. Join her. The family should come around the bus. The family should come around the bus and stand around the bus. Then, as we say, happy birthday to her. After that, we will pray. One, two, three, go. Happy birthday to
vai dar um canto de educação da canada base, do canadrime, e o outro todo mundo por quê?
This has been the funeral mass of the late 93-year-old Philomen Flory Gordon. Please join us shortly as we head across to the burial ground. Please stay tuned. For the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like He is in glory, for He is risen. 
the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend our mother and sister to the Lord, that the Lord may embrace her to peace and may raise up her body on the last day. Our response shall be, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. For our sister Philomen, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ to say that I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me shall live even in the dark, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Lord, you consume matter and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Philomen, and dry the tears of those who weep. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Have mercy. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friends, comfort us in our sorrow. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. You raise the dead to the life, give to our sister eternal life. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. You promise paradise to the repentant thief, bring women to the joy of heaven. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Our sister, was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her the fellowship with all your saints, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. She was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of Philemon. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life to our world. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. God of holiness and power, accept our prayer on behalf of your servant Philomene. Do not count his days against her deed against her, for in her heart she desired to do your way. As her faith unites her to your people on earth, so may your mercy join her to the angels in heaven. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please to stand and the family members come closer to the stand. Please. Why the choir was sit up in Children, husband, family members, come closer. You line on.
Not to put that here. Not to put waiting for those for the border and then. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. okay, okay. Nice. Okay. After yes. those for the border, go then we'll fix them. Oh. Okay. Not to put your little girl, not to put your own. Not to put your own here. Yes. Six of them. Right. One by one.
Excuse me, excuse me, sir. Put it a little lower down here, please. So it's around the border. Yes, right at the edge. No, put it around the edge. Put the border around the edge. Yes, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Rogers, put it a little lower down. You're putting it too, up too close. Lower down. Yeah. Put it right at the base. No, no, no,
This has been the funeral mass and the burial of the late Philomena Flory Gordon. On behalf of Emo News, we wish to extend the deepest condolences to the family and the friends of the deceased. We pray for continued guidance and strength as you go throughout this difficult time. To all our viewers, it was our pleasure to bring you this live coverage, both at the funeral mass and at the burial ground. We now take the opportunity to wish everyone a pleasant evening and a happy and safe weekend.